Brother Polite finds himself in hot water. Let's talk about it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with the guy S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Let's go. Brother Polite finds himself in hot water. Now, I'm going to take a stab at this uh, from a different perspective than everybody else because that's what I do. Try to look at this objectively from a 360 view, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. Now, for you guys who don't know, recently, uh, I guess as recent as August 16th, Brother Polite was arrested and uh, charged with uh, indecency uh, with a child sexual assault of a child or minor. Uh, this stems from an act or alleged act that happened back in February of 2021, earlier this, earlier this year, where he asked the mother of this child, the mother is a young woman he was dating, he asked the mother of the child if he could take the child to an after party. Now, this is all allegedly. Now, if this happened, that's a that's a red flag. <clears throat> that's a red flag. You got to question uh, him for one, and then you got to question the mother because the mother said yes. She allowed her child, her fourteen year old daughter, to leave with brother polite to go to an after party. Now. If you know anything about after parties, those things don't really kick off until two, three, four in the morning. Uh, now, they're in Miami. I've been to Miami. Miami doesn't stop partying. I hear something like Vegas. I've never been to Vegas, but I have been to Miami. Miami is awake 24 seven. So I'm guaranteeing this after party probably started around three, four, five o'clock in the morning. That's totally out of line with him and the mother. Allegedly, somewhere uh, in that, during that time, <clears throat> he offered the young girl uh, alcohol. Uh, she consumed the alcohol. Later, she became intoxicated, drunk, passed out. Allegedly, she woke up to Brother Polite uh, messing with her trying to uh, uh, get in between her clothes. She fought him off. Uh, he eventually took her back home to the mother. Uh, it was obvious that the daughter was distraught and disturbed. I guess some words were exchanged. Brother Polite allegedly asked the mother not to make this public and that it would ruin his career. Uh, obviously, you know, she, she didn't follow you know, that advice, and here we are now. So moving forward, after that incident, the police were contacted. And uh, what's strange to me, this started in February, right? This initiated in February. The uh, police put out a warrant for a uh, DNA sample in June. So that's a few months apart. I don't know why it took so long. But uh, either... Either party, if I'm either party, I would be concerned about that. Whether I'm brother polite or the mother, I would be concerned about that. That's, that's pretty strange to me. The results came back from that DNA test, and it was determined that uh, DNA, semen DNA was found on the girl's clothing. Now, I'm seeing some reports that say semen DNA was found, and some reports saying DNA was found. Now, if semen DNA was found, that's disturbing. That's alarming, and that brother's in some big trouble. If DNA was found absent of semen, I'm not too concerned about that because, man, if I shake your hand, I got your DNA on me. If you ride in my vehicle, your DNA is in my vehicle. If we hug, we exchange DNA. You can find hair particles uh, on my clothes from you or skin particles. So that, that's not alarming. But semen, that's a different story. So uh, just seeing two different reports out there. Now, I'm not passing judgment because, I, of course, I wasn't there. I don't know if this brother did that or not. 
I will say though, this is kind of ironic that this, not only ironic, but telling that this would happen to this brother and, and brothers like him. And what I mean by that, Brother Polite uh, appeared on my radar a few years back because he was in a lot of debates, the debates held on streets about religion, about uh, evolution, about man, about woman, about God. And he would hold these debates on the street corners against other guys who felt strongly about their stance on those issues. And so that's where I first came across him. Now, one thing that really stood out about him, uh, he believes woman is God. He believes the black woman is God. And I'm going to tell you what's ironic about this, that God's like him. That is the cheat sheet. That is the way you skip ahead of the line when you want a huge following. You pander to women. Especially you pander to black women, you'll skip the line and you'll get a huge following. I don't believe he would be so huge or recognized if he didn't take that stance and pandering to women and saying the black woman is God. But what's so ironic is guys like him, Dr. Umar Johnson, Gary Jackson, they pander to these women, right? But these are the women that do them in, the, the ones they say is God. Right, so if the woman is God and the woman is held in so high esteem, it's one of two things that's happening. Either this guy or this, this woman is held on this high plateau, is lying on you and doing you in, trying to ruin you, or you're violating this God. It's either or. You know, it's uh, it's just ironic and very telling. And so, you know, I'm not a, a brother polite detractor or supporter. I just sit back and watch. Uh, you know, I would say he's an intelligent brother, uh, intellectual brother. And he's quick. He's quick with his tongue, quick with the responses, quick on his feet. Uh, and that's a good thing if you can manage that. You know, uh, you got to be careful about that because what happens is you'll start really, really believing in your own height and think you're the smartest person on earth. And uh, you'll begin to think you're above reproach and uh, you lose humility and you get a false sense of reality. Uh, I will say to all the brothers out there that's in this position where you know, you're with the woman with kids, man, you got to set boundaries. Even if this, he didn't violate, but he only took the girl out, that's a violation. He crossed the, he crossed the line, the mother crossed the line, but as a man, you got to set the line. You have to draw the line in the sand and you got to protect yourself at all times. Uh, you got to understand, no matter how emotionally close you get to the kids, that you are not the biological father. And so uh, there's certain certain lines you got to draw, you know, because, you know, they, they get mad. They can do you in. The mother can try to do you in. The in-laws can try to do you in. So you got to protect yourself at all times. Uh, so he's in violation by even putting himself in that situation. Secondly, though, this is the angle I want to hit it from. I want to talk to the people. We as black people, man, we are uh, we are quick to put people on a pedestal that talk fast, that we believe are intelligent, and uh, especially, man, if they if they pander to women, I always say the black community is driven, driven by feminine energy. Um, they're driven by feminine energy as a black community. Well, other races are driven by masculine energy. If you think about it, guys like Dr. Umar, 
Group Hannington Women, Derek Jackson, uh, Brother Polite. They do not exist. They do not rise to the top in white America, Asian America, Mexican America, Latin America. They do not rise to the top. The guys who rise to the top in those communities are guys who push a masculine agenda, who talk about masculinity and talk about building up men. Only in the black community do guys rise up who pattern to women, right? Name one guy who pushes, who pushes masculinity in the black community, who pushes the uplifting, uplifting of the black man that has risen to the top. Now, you may say Kevin Samuels, but I want you to name someone who's done that absent of mentioning women. See, because Kevin Samuels is big also because he's pandering to women in a different way. Right? That's his audience, women. He's talking to women. But you can't name any guy in the black community that's risen to the top that just focuses, focuses on men doesn't happen. That's because we're driven by feminine energy. Brothers don't get up and speak up enough. Uh, we don't support each other enough. So you got guys like this can come in and they know the game. They peek the weakness in the game. They know it. Like, man, if I pander to women, to the black woman, if I say she's a god, say she's a queen, I'll get a huge follower. I just can't do it. Uh, Every black woman ain't no queen. And I don't believe the black woman is God at all. So I just can't do it. But uh, that's the cheat code. That's the cheat code. And so I'm sitting back and watching all this transpire. And I'm looking at comments. I'm looking at people make uh, blogs and videos about this. And I see that there's two sides. You got people that will support the brother without all the facts. And they'll support him. And then you got people that are crucifying the brother without all the facts. No objectivity. And uh, I can't trust people that can't be objective. Right? So you got to be, for me to trust you, man, you got to be the type of person, if someone's lying on your enemy, if someone is telling a lie on your enemy, so-called enemy, and you know it to be a lie. I respect people with the character to say, nah, I don't mess with him. We don't get along. We don't like each other. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. Uh, I can't stop stand by and say he did that. I can't co-sign that. Yeah, we don't like each other, but he didn't do that. That shows high character. Or if someone, if it's someone you support, a friend, if they did something super, super evil, super treacherous, and you can stand and say, yeah, I love him. That's my boy, but he's wrong and he needs to suffer the consequences. We don't see that a lot in the black community, man. And that's one of our downfalls. We got to stand on something, set our boundaries, set the moral compass. We got to have some scruples, some principles, some sound principles of what we stand for, what we don't stand for. We have to. Uh, that's part of a real culture. That's part of real branding about what you support and what you don't support. And we need to be in unison on that, but we're not. Uh, sit back, be objective, get all the facts. And even with that, I think you gotta have compassion. I think you gotta have compassion. Uh, this is a bad look for the brother if he did it. I think, you know, he got to he gotta pay the cost. Uh, more than likely, if he did something like this, 
something probably happened to him also as a child. That's not excusing him. You're right. That's not getting him off the chopping block. But that's just the reality. Most likely, not guaranteed, but most likely something happened to this brother uh, as a child that he didn't get dealt with, he didn't address, and he carried it over into his adulthood. I was telling my wife, I was like, you know, looking at situations like with R. Kelly, uh, all the allegations, and uh, R. Kelly is all but admitted that he, he's done a lot of this stuff, right? But if you look at his uh, auto, uh, autobiography, he admitted that he was molested uh, by a male at the age of 10, family member. And then uh, later on, between, uh, I believe, 12 and 16 or 12, 14, something like that, he was molested by a female family member. And he's illiterate, right? So that's that's a, a triple whammy. Those things were not dealt with. And so I believe, you know, R. Kelly carried those things on into his adulthood. And like I was telling my wife, you know, nobody cares about what you've been through once you become grown. They don't care. R. Kelly is getting no sympathy, right, from, from anyone, no matter what he went through. And... Man, I, I don't know if that's that's the right take or not. Like, this guy is essentially a child in an adult body. His his growth, his mental growth was stunning. But, hey man, once you reach 18, no one cares. So, you know, his brother's listening to this right now. Man, address some issues. Address those issues. You know them. Maybe no one else knows, uh, but you and the perpetrator, or you and the predator, uh, you and the violator, but you know what you got to deal with. Address those things, man. Um, I've probably only had one guy I've known uh, open up and say he'd been through something in regards to uh, sexual assault as a child. Man, guys keep that a secret, you know. Fortunately, you know, I've never been through anything like that. And, uh, you know, that's a blessing, you know. But uh, and no one in my family, to, to my knowledge. But it happens. Brothers keep it a secret, and I know why they keep it a secret. But, man, you got to deal with it or it's going to come out one way or another. You know, get that help you need. But uh, also, on another note, like I said, protect yourself. Don't get caught in those situations. Uh, don't start buying into your lower self, your ego, and thinking you can't be touched. You know, it was very uh, distasteful, I believe. Uh, Dr. Our brother Polite spoke once he's released, made bail. He spoke, he really didn't address the issues or the case. But he's talked a lot about his money, uh, a lot about the properties, the stocks, and uh, where he made it from. And so, uh, yeah, that was distasteful, disheartening. You know, uh, last week, I think I told you, a, a guy I was looking at uh, made a statement to never let your... Uh, net worth determine your self-worth and i think the brother might be lost in that but yeah hey man sit back see what's going on no judgment let's have some compassion if this happened to this young lady hey have some passion for it if it didn't and this brother is falsely accused let's have let's have compassion for him whether you like him or not all right as always from me to you love peace